On many of the larger documentaries and entertainment shows, production companies will often supply us with a transcript. It's a nice big set of documents that is a fully typed out listing of everything every character has said during their interviews, with the time code neatly marked by each answer. Now there are good points to having a transcript as well as bad. The good points revolve around the fact that we don't have to go through all of our many hours of interview sync and break it down. We can just read them, mark the parts we want with a highlighter pen and then quickly create our rough cut. The bad points are that we have no idea about the emotional state of the character when they're giving their answer. The face they pull, interesting body language they give off that says a lot more about how they feel about a subject than the words that they are saying to camera. Scenes are often made by these very small nuances. I just can't, I don't want to think about the misery that would ensue if it's not perfect. That being said, many of the reality and entertainment shows on television only do very short interviews as part of their actuality scenes. The characters are often only talking about specific things that have just happened. That was harrowing. Or are about to happen. If I get nervous, it'll be tomorrow morning. And so therefore, the sync is short and easy to watch. In this tutorial, we're going to go through a classic documentary style interview and pretend that there are no transcripts. Remember, there are transcripts on the hard drive, but for this lesson, let's try it without them. We'll isolate the answers and look at ways to categorize them. So, as we've discussed, we must start thinking about our sync in isolated segments. A character may give us an amazing start of an answer or an end, and the middle may be terrible, or they might mess it up and go off on a tangent. In the next take, they may explain the middle bit very well, but the start and the end are bad. Later on in the process, we'll be looking at intercutting the two different takes to get the best and most comprehensive outcome. In B-roll, if we have a duplication, we take the one we like best. But in sync, we may be using parts of both or even all three. So we shouldn't delete anything just yet. So, let's get started. Now, let's go through this simple process. I will keep playing the clip until the director has asked their question. Quite an interesting point you say actually about it being an ever evolving city. It's constantly changing. That's really interesting. Oh, yeah. And we'll then mark an endpoint at the start of their answer. Oh, yeah, it's not. It's, I mean, London is, you think of London as old and ancient and old and ancient things don't grow. They seem kind of, it's kind of like dead words, but it's the furthest thing from the truth. This city is just growing all the time. You know, there's always something new popping up. I mean, you can't look, <laughs> you know, across the London skyline and not see scaffold. I will have cut out all of the rubbish beforehand and only got the actual start. I'll listen to it, find the end, and mark the out point, subclip it, and then label it. What I personally like to do is summarize what they are talking about into a few words. This also adds another layer of memory in my mind after watching. Now, at this point, we should have thought about some type of organization for our sync. We should be thinking about starting bins with specific sync subjects. As we've discussed, it all depends on what type of show we're working on. But two very good and consistent categories for sync bins are scenes and subjects. We can lock down sync that will definitely go into a specific scene. Or we can lock it down into a certain subject that multiple people may be talking about. Now, a tip that many editors use is after we've subclipped a piece of sync, a good idea is to put a quality check mark in some way after the text. We could write very good or not good or good ending. Or a common one is to put asterisks. The more you put in, the better the answer was. One asterisk is bad, five is fantastic. 
This is particularly good if we have multiple takes of the same answer. We could also use a color grading system, denoting what is bad, average, or great. In the end, we can use any type of labeling system we want, as long as we identify the subject they are talking about and the quality of the answer. And most of all, it makes sense to us and we are consistent. As the weeks go by in our edit, we'll start to forget every single answer. This labeling system will really help us to remember the further and further we get into our edit. It is common to cut scenes in documentaries and entertainment shows over a long period of time and not see them for weeks. And then when other aspects of the film change, we need to insert additional bits of sync into this particular scene. If that was weeks after the start of the edit, we're going to find it a real lifesaver that everything has been methodically labelled. This method of subclipping our interviews is great for documentary projects where the interviews last for a long time. But if we're working on a reality or entertainment show, the interviews are often much shorter as they are only back or forward referencing what has just happened or what is about to happen. Therefore, because they are so short, it's often better to chop them up on the timeline and bunch them together into common themed sequences, ready for immediate rough cutting with the actuality. Whichever way we decide to categorize and whichever genre we're working in, we'll have splintered everything that has been said into easily accessible chunks ready to create the skeleton structure of our new scene. But on top of that, we'll have got to know our characters a lot more and we'll have mapped out everything they've said. I think our personalities work fairly well together. It's only after this that we can truly make our first inroads into scene construction. <laughs>